good to see you uh, this morning. If you haven't noticed uh, inside the bulletin there, uh, uh, I put uh, Psalm 118.24 right there under the welcome. And uh, uh, this is the day which the Lord has made. Uh, we will rejoice and be glad in it. So I uh, hope you came here ready to uh, rejoice, ready to uh, worship our Heavenly Father, ready to fellowship together. And uh, just again, uh, thrilled to see you this morning. <clears throat> We're going to start out here today. With number 493 in your hymn books. Uh, revive us again, number 493. And I stand, if you would please, as we worship the uh, Lord together here today. 493. <laughs>
59 uh, people need the Lord. <laughs> spacious skies, for amber waves of grain, the purple mountains majesties above the fruited plain. America, America, God shed his grace on thee, and crown thy good with brotherhood from sea to shining sea. O beautiful for pilgrim feet, whose stern and passion stress, a thoroughfare for freedom beat across the wilderness. America, America, God, mend thine every flaw. Confirm thy soul in self-control, thy liberty in law. O oh, beautiful for heroes proved in liberating strife, who more than self their country love, and mercy <coughs> and delight. America, America, may God thy gold refine. Till all success be nobleness, and every gain divine. O oh, beautiful for patriot dream, that sees beyond the years, an alabaster city's gleam, undimmed by human tears. America, America, God shed his grace on thee. Crown thy good with brotherhood from sea to shining sea. This weekend we celebrate uh, the birthday of our country. We celebrate our independence. We celebrate our freedom uh, across uh, this wonderful, uh, beautiful country of ours. And so we're going to uh, sing uh, those words that I just read. Uh, with number 641, America the Beautiful. 641. <laughs>
33, verse number 12. <coughs> Last song we're going to sing this morning is number 608. All that will be glory. Number 608.
again, so good to see everybody today. So it, it's a joy uh, when uh, whenever God's people can get together uh, with one another, especially if we worship our Heavenly Father. So uh, great to see you here this morning. You got your Bibles with you? We're going to be in John chapter number three uh, this morning. John chapter number three. Today is the uh, not only the um, uh, we're celebrating the the, the the Fourth of July weekend today, uh, but today is the first Sunday of the month, and that means it is our mission Sunday. Uh, we have missionaries that we support through our prayers, through our finances, to the church here. Uh, uh, start a church, uh, each and every month as we uh, do our very best to uh, fulfill that financial uh, commitment that we make to them that they depend upon uh, as they're out there uh, spreading the gospel message uh, all over the world. And so we, we put the globe out, we put it in the bulletin every uh, first night of every month uh, to remind ourselves of that. There's uh, several brand new uh, letters from uh, the missionaries we support uh, that we've hung up uh, this past week. And so I would encourage you to go around and check those out. Also, uh, I've told you this before, but if you're uh, on social media, most if not all of our missionaries have some sort of social media account. And so you can uh, follow them on there. They're always posting updates or special prayer requests. Uh, through that, and so um, uh, if you're into that, you can uh, follow them uh, on uh, social media. Also, I put in the uh, uh, bulletin, if you notice, uh, on the inside, on the right-hand side, and down towards the bottom, instead of a random thought for the week, uh, I put some uh, a list of our visiting missionaries. Now, these are uh, missionaries that we support who will be with us uh, sometime throughout the rest of this year. Uh, a lot of stuff got put on hold. You all know how that went. And so we had to reschedule with uh, several of these. But I did want to put a list in there for you, uh, just so you're aware of, of uh, who will be visiting us uh, in the very near future. And so again, they're listed on the inside of the bulletin. August 9th, uh, Dave and Florence McDonald, uh, missionaries to Spain. Uh, we, we, uh, the church has supported them for a very long time. Uh, their letter is the first one on the uh, this side of the uh, church over here, the very first one. And so he'll be with us here on August 9th. Uh, to uh, give us an update and preach the word for us as well. September 6th, uh, we've got Isaiah and Monica Fitch. Uh, they're going to be with us. We, they were the first ones we had scheduled in the, uh, this year. Had to uh, postpone and reschedule with them. So they're going to be with us on the 6th. And uh, we, we have known Isaiah and Monica ever since they were uh, campers at camp that we went to. And they went all through camp uh, together. Now they are married and they are going off on the mission field. And so I'm super, super excited uh, to have them with us on the 6th of September. Also on September 16th, uh, which is a Wednesday night, uh, Don Hart, uh, our missionary that we support to uh, Portugal. And I think her letter is somewhere right, right back there, uh, third from the back. Uh, she'll be here with us on a Wednesday night, and uh, that's uh, what fit into her schedule. So she's going to uh, give us an update of how things are going with her. Um, uh, we, uh, and, and Wednesday night's a little more laid back, and so we'll just uh, have some time to spend with Dawn, which will be awesome. And then uh, coming up in October uh, on the 18th, uh, Alan and Angie Harris, they've been with us uh, numerous times before. They're going to uh, swing by and stop in, uh, see us again, uh, bless us with uh, some music and, and uh, some preaching. So uh, uh, the Harris family will be with us on October 18th. And those are the ones we have so far. If any more, give me a call. We will have them in uh, with us. I did want to read this. Uh, we got a, a card from another one of our missionaries, Brother uh, Billy Carruth. I uh, sent a card, and I put the card out there on the table in the foyer. Uh, but I wanted to read what it said to you. Uh, it was just a simple little thank you card. And it, says, uh, it said this. Uh, Dear Harmony family, just a brief note to let you know how thankful we are for your generosity in our ministry. God bless you during this very strange season in our history. Uh, sincerely, uh, Brother uh, Billy Peru. And again, we uh, the little bit that we send uh, means a whole lot to these missionaries. And so don't think uh, uh, because we're a small country church who just sends a, a few dollars here and there, don't think that it is not making an impact uh, for the cause of Christ, because it is. It's furthering the kingdom of God. And uh, he wanted to thank us for our faithfulness. Um, and I want to thank you um, for your generosity in, in 
continuing to give toward missions uh, through this crazy time. A lot of churches have had to uh, cut back on that or cut missionaries altogether because the, the finances were just, just were not coming in. Uh, but uh, y'all are uh, uh, being obedient to God, and, and God is blessed, and so uh, thank you for that. Pray, pray, pray for our uh, missionaries. John chapter 3. We're going to look at several verses in John chapter 3, really kind of zero on one. We'll jump around a little bit, possibly. But we're going to uh, focus on John chapter number 3. <clears throat> Last Friday night, I went to my cousin's house for a birthday party. And it was a nice time. You know, a lot of family was there. Uh, some uh, friends of the family uh, were there. We had the, uh, the, the tent set up to keep the, the, the sun off of us. And uh, had some food. And I uh, just hung out and visited with one another. It was a good time of uh, just hanging out and, and, and seeing one another. Uh, the smaller kids, uh, after the presents were opened and all that stuff, the, the younger kids went off and they were swimming in the pool. And, and the older boys were off. Uh, you know, riding their dirt bikes and, and go-karts and all that stuff in the backyard. And uh, the rest of us were just kind of sitting around uh, visiting with one another. And, and that went on through uh, most of the evening. And uh, <laughs> we, Tracy and myself, were the last ones to leave. I don't know how that always ends up. We, somehow we're always the last ones to leave. But uh, we were, we, were uh, uh, we, we took off from there. And we were driving home, and, and it was one of those, you know how this has been uh, the last few days with the weather, real hot during the day. But when the sun starts to go down, it cools off, and it gets real nice outside. And so we are driving home, had the doors and the roof off the Jeep. We're, we're cruising home, a uh, cool breeze coming through the Jeep, you know. The, uh, if you've noticed the last few nights, the moon has just been spectacular. And so we're, we're taking all these back roads home uh, with, the, with the cool breeze blowing past us, the, the, the moon nice and bright uh, shining out there in the sky. And uh, it was just one of those really uh, great uh, evenings. And as we were driving home, the whole way home, we're seeing fireworks just going off uh, in the distance. Here and there, you'd see them over here, and then you'd see them up over here. And you know how it is with fireworks. Some of them are bigger, you know, some of them are smaller. Some of them kind of fizzle up. Some of them go, you know, real, real high in the sky. And so we're just driving along with the breeze blowing. The moon's out. Uh, 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 the fireworks are going. You could see them uh, all over. And it, I, I kid you not, it was the entire drive home. So you could see them, you could hear them, the loud booms that kind of startle you, uh, the, those ones that, that fizzle out real quick, uh, the little ones that uh, aren't quite as loud. So we could see them, uh, we could hear them as we're driving down the road. You could smell them. You guys know that smell? There's a very distinct smell uh, that comes from fireworks, setting up firecrackers or whatever, maybe. And we drove past several homes and the families are out in the yard, and, uh, you know, dad's over there with a lighter, and the kids are running around, and there's this smoke from all the stuff they've set up just kind of whipping across the road, and we would drive through it. And so we're seeing them, we're hearing them, we're smelling them as we're driving home. And it was a very, it was a, it was a great drive. It was a great drive. And so in the midst of all of that happening, I'm feeling all patriotic. You know what I mean? I'm just feeling, I'm, I, I, I've got this sense of freedom about me. Doors roof off the Jeep. We're cruising along. There's fireworks blasting in the sky. And I'm, I've got, got this sense of freedom. And I'm feeling all patriotic. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, America. You know what I mean? I'm just feeling it, you know? It's 4th of July weekend, and I am just feeling it. All patriotic. And I'll tell you what, I don't know about y'all, but I love our country. I love our country, the United States of America. I love it. I am proud to be an American. I would sing that old, what is it, uh, is it Lee Greenwood? 
I would sing that one song, but I'll spare you this morning. I'll spare you. But I, I love I love it. I love our country. God has blessed our country. You know how we always say God bless America? Listen, has not God blessed America? In so many ways. He has blessed our country. He has blessed us in so many ways. I love our country. Always have. I'm going to date myself a bit right here. When I was a kid, I don't know if y'all watch uh, uh, professional wrestling, but I was a big fan of professional wrestling when I was a kid. And I'll tell you what, if you used to watch it, you know Hulk Hogan would walk out to the ring. So you know, I see this spot. He would walk out of the ring. He'd be carrying that American flag. The, the, the music would be playing, I am a real American. You know, and he'd get up there and he'd prance around the ring. He'd rip that shirt off. And I'm like, yeah, people are chanting, USA, USA. I'm like, yeah, America. You know, and he'd just get that all pumped up feeling. And, and I, would, I would love Hulk Hogan growing up. And I've always been that way. I've always loved the United States of America. I love, I love our country. That old flag right back there, listen, that still means something to me. That still means something to me. Looking at it, uh, uh, when you go somewhere, well, when we were allowed to go somewhere, uh, you sing the national anthem, you know? Just stand up, take your hat off, look at that flag, and sing those words, I still get goosebumps. I still get goosebumps. That old flag still means something to me. I love this country. I love it. And I know a lot of you do too. I love our country. But I'll tell you, this year has been crazy. Our, our, our dear nation is in some rough shape of late. It really is. It has been. And as much as I hate to talk about it, I've got to talk about it. There is a lot of division in our United States of America. God, you guys have heard me talk about it before, but it's, it's, it's a problem. It's such a huge issue. There is division in our United States of America. We are so divided over so many things. We're, we're divided over this pandemic going on right now. We are. The, the coronavirus, COVID-19, whatever they're calling it from day to day. Listen, you, we're, we're so divided. There are so many opinions about this thing all over the place. There are those uh, who say that it's, 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 it's all fake, it's all political. Uh, there are those who say uh, we're all going to get it, we're all going to die. And you got everybody in between. You know, we're very divided on this. We're very divided over how to deal with with this wearing masks or not very divided some people say you should some people say uh, you shouldn't uh, and you got everybody in between you got everybody with an opinion I say if you want to wear a mask wear a mask if you don't don't That's, we're, we're Americans right we can make a decision but uh, we're so divided over that whether or not to wear a mask when uh, here, whatever, a couple weeks back or whatever it was, uh, when we went down to see the kids in Texas State, uh, I believe I mentioned it to some of you, but halfway through the week, they came out and said, uh, we, you, every time you left the house, you had to wear it. You had no choice in the matter. And so we would, we would put the mask on. Every time we walked out the front door, uh, we would put the mask on. But people are divided on their opinions on that. There is so much division about the police officers in our country. There are those who say uh, they are vital uh, to keeping the peace uh, and the law and order in our country. And then there are those who say that we should uh, defund them or completely do away with them. And then you got everybody in between. There's great division over that. We are divided over politics. Yeah, I'm going there, but I'm not going to stay there long. We're so divided over politics. Republican, Democrat. You've got your woke left, you've got your alt right. 
you got all these people. You've got a push for uh, in the United States of America. You have a push for socialism. You have a push for Marxism. You have a push for communism in our country. And you've got all these in, uh, from one end of the spectrum to another. And then you've got the moderate Democrats, the moderate Republicans going, what do we do with all these crazies? You know, and they were so divided over politics. So divided. <laughs> Hang on with me here. Over unborn babies. Goodness gracious. We're so divided. We, we have uh, people who say uh, that is a person in the womb. You have people that say it is. It's just a fetus. Just some blob of tissue. So divided on that. We are divided over the color of our skin, uh, uh, our racism. Uh, everything is racist nowadays. Everything is racist nowadays. Everything. We're divided over that. We're divided over guns. You, should you have guns? Should you not? You, we should have the right to do that. Uh, they should come and take them away. you got every opinion in between. Listen, I love our nation, but our nation is in rough shape right now. Our beloved country is going through a tough time. This isn't my sermon, but I'll, I'll say this. We've gone through tough times before and we survived. And as long as uh, we keep our eyes on the Lord, we'll get through this one too. That's a sermon for another day. But we are so divided. There are so many different groups out there forming. Groups of different people with different opinions, with different agendas. Different fractions are splintering off. Different organizations, different assemblies of people. And you see them uh, throughout our country taking over uh, parts of cities. And you see all this division in our beloved country in the year 2020. So as I have been thinking about all of this, praying about even this morning's sermon, as I'm driving down the road, feeling all patriotic, I'm thinking about all these different groups with all these different agendas out there today, this thought kept coming to my mind. That within all these different divisions and all these different groups, there's really only two groups that matter. In the big picture, beyond all of our opinions and viewpoints, beyond all of our preferences and political ideals, there are only two groups that matter. That's the title of today's sermon, by the way. Two groups that matter. John chapter number 3. Verse number 3. <coughs> Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Let's bow our heads before the Lord. Father, we again, again thank you for this time. We thank you for this country. We thank you how you have blessed it. We thank you how uh, you have blessed us. And Father, I thank you personally that myself, I was born in this country. And Lord, I just ask, as I preach your word here this morning, as I go through this sermon, Father, give me the words to speak. And may people have ears to hear. I pray that you would speak clearly to them. I pray that they would be obedient and respond to your voice, to your will, and your lives, whatever that may be here today. Father, be with us. Continue to bless us. Continue to bless the United States. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Here in John chapter number 3. Jesus is having a conversation uh, with this guy named Nicodemus. You go back to verse 1. We'll see this here. John chapter 3, verse 1. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. Now, this guy was a big shot Pharisee. He was a, he was a big to-do 
as far as the Pharisees go. Verse number two, the same, uh, speaking of Nicodemus, the same came to Jesus by night. Uh, uh, he had to go uh, there by night. Uh, so, you know, the other Pharisees didn't kind of really see what he was up to. So he goes to see Jesus in the night. And said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these uh, miracles that thou doest, except God be with him. And that's when we get to verse number three. Jesus answered and said unto him, unto Nicodemus, Verily, verily. Remember, verily, verily. Whenever you see that, it's pretty important what he's going to say. He says it twice. Verily, verily. But pay attention. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. I will admit to all of you this morning that I am no expert on a lot of the complex issues we find ourselves discussing in the year 2020. But I know what the scripture says. And I know what Jesus said. And I know that in the big picture, in the grand scheme of things, in the light of eternity, beyond all of our differences and divisions here on this earth and in this country, I know this, that there are only two groups that matter in the big picture of things. This is what Jesus is explaining to Nicodemus. There are two groups that really matter. There are those who are born again, and there are those who are not. And every single human being alive on the face of this earth is in one of those two groups. Every single person here this morning uh, listening to this sermon is in one of those two groups. The two groups that really matter. There are the saved and there are the unsaved. There are the believing and there are the unbelieving. There is the just and there is the unjust. There is the righteous and there is the wicked. There's the wheat and there's the chaff. You've got the faithful and the faithless, the godly and the ungodly. You have those bound for heaven, and you got that other group, and they're bound for hell. These are the only groups that matter. Those are the only two groups, and of all these fractions, of all these divisions that we see, those are the only two groups that really matter. And the difference between the two? The guy named Jesus. Now I have my own personal opinions, as everyone, everyone does, on all those things uh, that are dividing our country right now, all those things that I mentioned. I have my own opinions on those. And, and I... <laughs> I contemplated ranting about my own opinions during the today's sermon, but the Holy Spirit says, nah, don't do that. And so this morning, you know, from behind this pulpit, if you want to talk opinions, we can talk some other time all day long. But this morning from behind this pulpit, the best thing uh, I can tell you <laughs> is what Jesus was telling Nicodemus. And that is, you must be born Again. So I'll ask the question to you, and I don't care if this is your first, I don't see any first time visitors, but if this is your first time here or you've been coming here for uh, 50 years, I don't care. I'm going to ask you the question. Because coming, simply coming to church and sitting in a pew does not save you. So I'm going to ask the question Have you, not the person next to you, not the other people in your family. I'm talking to you. Have you called upon the name of the Lord? Have 
you put your faith and your trust in Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior? Is your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Talking to each one of us. Are you saved or not? Are you born again or not? Which group are you in? Because there are only two groups <laughs> that really matter. Look again at our verses in John chapter 3. So Jesus tells Nicodemus in the third verse there, he says, uh, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And so Nicodemus is trying to work through all this. He's trying to figure all this out. And so he goes on to verse number four to uh, ask a question here. Nicodemus uh, says unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Like, Jesus, what are you talking about? Born again? What do you mean? How can a, uh, how can a man be born when he was old? Uh, can he enter the second time to his mother's womb and be born? So he's trying to figure all this out. Verse number five. Jesus answered, Verily, verily. Never see that again. Very, very important. Pay attention. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven. So Jesus is saying, We've got you've got you're one or the other here, Nicodemus. You've got to understand this. You're, you're either born again or you're not. There's two groups, and you're in one of those two groups. Verse number six. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. How many groups is he talking about in that verse? Two. Two. You're either born of the flesh, you're born of the spirit. You're either saved through the blood of Christ, or you're not. Verse number seven. Marvel, marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh, and whither it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. And so Jesus is trying to explain this uh, to Nicodemus. Uh, there is uh, one way to heaven. Uh, you're one of two groups. The group that's going and the group that's not. He continues on uh, telling a few things. Uh, Nicodemus, they have this back and forth. But I want you to jump down to verse number 14. <clears throat> And again, Jesus uh, continues explaining this. <coughs> Verse number 14. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so he's, he's saying to uh, Nicodemus, who was a Pharisee, who had a very uh, uh, vast knowledge of the Old Testament. So Jesus brings up Moses, uh, who Nicodemus is well aware of. He says, And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. The Son of Man. The Messiah, Jesus himself, must be lifted up where? Upon a cross on Mount Calvary. To hang there and to die there. It says, must, uh, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Verse number 15. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That's the point of Calvary. It's the reason Jesus died and rose again. So that uh, you could go from that group who is not saved to the group who does. From the group who does not believe to the group who has put their faith and trust and, and believe in Jesus Christ as the Messiah, the Son of God. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life. Verse 16. Some of you might know this one. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So you've got those who are going to perish and those who have everlasting life. The only two groups that matter. Verse 17. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already. Condemned and not condemned. The two groups, one and the other, the only two groups that matter. And he believes on, uh, not is condemned already because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. There are only two groups that matter. We get caught up in all this stuff of the world, all these things in life. And really, there are only two groups that really matter. Two different paths that Jesus 
talks about. Turn, hold your spot there, and I want you to go back to Matthew chapter 7. Go back to Matthew chapter 7. Because Jesus has talked about this before. Matthew chapter 7. Look at verses 13 and 14. This is Matthew chapter 7, verses 13 and 14, where Jesus says, Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life. And few there be that find it. He's talking about two different gates. He's talking about two different paths, uh, which lead to two different places. One which leadeth to destruction, and one which leadeth unto life. Two different groups. And every single person is in one of those two groups. Which one are you in? Which path are you on? Which group are you in? John chapter 3, verse 36. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life. But the wrath of God abideth on him. Two different groups. Completely different destinations. Which group are you in? Acts chapter number 4, verse number 12. Neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. There's only one name, and that is the name of the Son of God, Jesus Christ, the Messiah. He is the only way of salvation. There is no other name. You either know that name as your Savior or you don't. Which group are you in? John chapter 14, verse 6. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Do you know him as your Savior today? Are you with him or not? Are you his or not? When your time on this earth is done, and it'll be done for all of us at some point. When your time on this earth is done, none of that other stuff that I mentioned before is going to matter. Which group you're in is what will matter. Who Jesus is to you will matter. Your relationship or lack thereof will matter for eternity is the only thing that will matter. Which group you're in will determine your eternity. And it will determine uh, and it will affect your life right here and right now. Where you are with Jesus will direct your opinion on a lot of those things that I mentioned. A lot of those things that are dividing our country. Who, who Jesus is to you and where you stand with Jesus uh, uh, will uh, direct your opinion on a lot of those things and how you should react to them. How you should handle them. Who you are uh, within Jesus uh, will influence those things that you seek in your life. Seeking unity, order, peace, or division, disorder, chaos. <laughs> Which way? Which group? What are you seeking? It's going to your relationship with Jesus Christ will impact how you treat a one another. E even here in the church. Brother Josiah last Sunday uh, preached a fantastic message. I watched it. Uh, it was recorded and I watched it. If you didn't, if you weren't here, you didn't watch it, go to our Facebook page and find it on there. Uh, it's not on the timeline. You have to go to the post.
Post, but it's, it's on there. He, he preached a fantastic message on how we should uh, treat uh, one another, brothers and sisters in Christ in the church. And so uh, who Jesus is to you, which group you are in, is going to impact how we treat one another group. Those who know Jesus, we know we're supposed to love others, serve others, witness to others. Stand bold in the truth of Scripture, but yet speak the truth with love. It's going to affect that. Who Jesus is to you determines which group you are in. It determines how your eternity. It determines how your worldview and how you treat others. It affects your entire existence. Maybe you're here this morning, and you're like Nicodemus. If we're just being honest, and you're being honest with yourself and with God. Maybe you're here this morning, and you're like Nicodemus, and you're just trying to figure all this out. He, Nicodemus was a Pharisee. He was a smart guy, but yet he was trying to figure all this out, and Jesus was explaining it to him. And maybe that's where you're at today. Well, I want to tell you that the same truth that Jesus told to Nicodemus is the same truth that applies to you today. You must be born again. Are you? And that's a question coming from my heart as your pastor. <laughs> Are you? Are you born again? Are you saved? Which group are you in? Where will you spend eternity? Only two groups that matter. Which one are you in? We're going to end today with a time of prayer. And I would just encourage you. If you have business with God to take care of. And listen, God is so good and God is so loving that, that he works uh, in each of our lives very specifically. And he speaks to us in a very direct way. And he deals with you. What's God dealing with you? If you have business to take care of with God today, don't hesitate. Don't wait. Don't put it off. Don't come up with excuses. Don't drag your feet. If you've got something that God is convicting, that his Holy Spirit is convicting you of today, whether that means that you uh, need to be saved, that you need to be born again, uh, maybe it's that. Maybe it's something completely different. Get it settled with God today. Before you walk out of this building, get it settled with God today. Maybe you just want to, as we're celebrating the 4th of July and feeling all patriotic, Maybe you just want to pray for our nation. It needs it. It needs it. So if you can't think of anything else to pray for here in a minute when the music starts to play, pray for the United States of America. Maybe you just want to give thanks this morning for how God has blessed you. Maybe for how God has blessed the United States. And that he will continue to bless. Maybe you just want to pray for courage and boldness to go out there, proclaim the truth, the gospel of Jesus Christ to a world that desperately needs it. I don't know what God has spoken to your heart today. I don't know what you need to pray about, but I'll bet you do. I bet you know exactly what it is. And so we're going to have a time of prayer. I would encourage you to take that to the Lord here this morning. With every head bowed, every eye.